Since our brain is designed with a negative bias, so I've heard to survive the caveman days, how do we stop that? I was raised by a mom who was a worry ward. Guess who inherited that? And I have a son in law enforcement. I'm worried that my fear of something happening to him or a loved one is going to be manifested by my worries. I heard your Q&A answer about us not being powerful enough to create death, which helped. But how do I stop this shit from coming into my brain in the first place? I tend to go down catastrophic rabbit holes. This happens in my other areas of life too. So yes, you're not powerful enough to create death because that's a contract that is signed by that person and the universe, I guess. I guess that's the contract between you and the universe. I don't fully understand it, but I know that there's a contract. I don't know exactly what this looks like. I don't know if there's like a table, you a room with a table you walk into and there's literally like a piece of paper with a pen. I have no idea, but I do know for certain that there is a contract. Now, in terms of are you able to manifest these catastrophic scenarios or scenarios that you don't want happening based on your fears? Yeah, absolutely. If they uh, become your dominant vibration, they absolutely can. So we definitely want to detach emotional charge from this. We definitely want to detach um, meanings that don't matter here because what your mind is doing is it's just creating unnecessary meanings and unnecessary labels and giving way too much importance to these intrusive thoughts. And all these are just intrusive thoughts. And if we recognize that intrusive thoughts are just intrusive thoughts and we attach indifference to them and kind of give them like this, so what? You know what I mean? Like there's visuals and things that you can do, which I'll give you some tools for this, but I will share from my personal experience that absolutely, if this dominates your vibration, it can manifest. I manifested this shit. Um, almost sort of, it's kind of like a up manifestation in the sense that it, thank God it wasn't exactly the manifestation, but it also proves too that you can't cause death with your own thoughts. So for example, I had this insane fear that something bad was going to happen to Brennan, that Brennan was going to die before I gave birth to our son or while he was a father and my son would grow up without a father. We went to Greece when I was 32, 33 weeks pregnant and Brennan had this thing happen to him, which we ended up finding out what it was exactly because it ended up happening um, a couple of times. We recognize it's happened before in his life and just what it was connected to and which behavior it was connected to. We initially thought, like I literally thought he had a heart attack. Thank God he has no heart problems whatsoever. There's no reason for him to have a heart attack. So it wasn't that, but I literally, he just flopped dead on me basically for, for 90 whole seconds, wasn't breathing. His eyes had no life in them. There was no Brennan for 90 seconds. And it was the worst 90 seconds of my life. And then it ended up happening again in the same day. So, um, I had to like, my shaman calls this burping your fear. So when you have a fear that just overcomes your being at some point, your soul is going to manifest that fear so that you can see that there is life beyond the fear that the fear actually holds no power over you. And so I don't ever want you to get to this point of burping your fear. So I'd rather you clear the fear long before and detach the importance of these thoughts. So for me, every single day, I would have these like visualizations and flashes of images and I would give them so much meaning and I would like run myself through scenarios of like, what if I'm a single mom? What if Brennan's not here? What if I have to give birth by myself? Blah, 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 all this stuff. Right. And turns out he had that scenario happen to him. He obviously didn't die. Thank God. And, um, but I had to burp that fear. I no longer have that fear because I burped that fear, but I don't want you to go through something that you don't need to go through. It's very traumatic. I had to do a lot of trauma therapy for it. My point being, it's not about stopping this mechanism in the brain. You can't stop a very useful, if you see it as actually incredibly useful and a powerful mechanism in the brain that works and functions so well when it's necessary. When you are in fight or flight mode, when you are literally running from a tiger or bear or lion, like you want this part of your brain to work. It's not about stopping it. This part of your brain will signal to you when you shouldn't be walking down a dark alleyway. This signal, this part of your brain will sing, signal to you when someone on the street, on a dark street, if you're going to like take a left instead of you're deciding, should I go left or should I go straight? And you look left and you see this person walking down the street and you just get this like insanely bad feeling about them. Like I should not go down that path. I should not cross paths with that person. Instead, I should go straight. And then you ended up like literally 
avoiding a serial killer or something without knowing it. Like, thank God for that part of the brain. Be grateful for that part of the brain. When it's functioning properly, it's a very useful and powerful mechanism. But labeling it as something that isn't supposed to be happening only provokes it to keep coming and coming and coming. So when you're stressing out now that you're having these intrusive thoughts, okay, like anyone who's ever been postpartum with a baby has had postpartum intrusive thoughts. Like you just have these intrusive thoughts of like, what if this thing falls on my baby? What if I accidentally drop a knife on my baby? What if I accidentally, what if my dog accidentally eats my baby? Like, what if this, right? There's all these intrusive thoughts. And the thing is, is like, if you label it as this is bad and this is not supposed to be happening, I'm telling you, it only provokes it to get stronger and stronger and stronger because what are you focusing on now? You're focusing even more on those thoughts. You're focusing even more on that mechanism of your brain. You're fueling so much more energy and power to that part of the brain that it only goes subconsciously, oh, you want me to work harder? Got it. We got more coming your way. And so boom, 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 boom. And what you're doing is you're attaching meaning to something that really doesn't have any meaning at all. And Andrea, like last year when I was working with her, I think it's been a year already since her first session, early on in her session, she gave me this amazing uh, metaphor that I, I don't know if I shared in the last MBA round. I think I've shared this visual and I don't know, forgive me if I shared it in our last Q&A, but basically it's like a thought is like, Imagine you are outside, there's like a lazy river that you're floating in, like you you decide to go float in a lazy river. And so you bring your inner tube, you lay in it, and you're just like floating on the most incredible river that's just like, you know, just moving you along this river. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, serene day. There's beautiful grass along the sides and trees. And oh my God, it's amazing. Like birds are singing. The sun is shining. It's the most magnificent day of your life. And all of a sudden in this crystal clear water, you see a piece of trash floating by you and you go, huh, that doesn't belong here. Right. Because it's like such a serene and clean environment. You're like, that's weird. That doesn't belong here. And so you decide to take it out of its environment because it doesn't belong here. So you pick up this piece of trash and you decide to take it with you until you reach the side where there's a trash can and you just throw it away. You like have this intention of throwing it away. And that's what you do. You take up this, you pick up this piece of trash and then you throw it away and you just go, huh, that doesn't belong here, right? You don't attach any meaning to this piece of trash. You don't pick up this trash attach it to you, glue it to you, staple it to you and say, I am now this trash. This trash is, I'm going to take this with me for the rest of my life. (laughs) And then you just carry on the rest of your life with this piece of trash. No, you just throw it in the trash can. That's where it belongs. So when I have an intrusive thought, I really like to practice the energy of indifference. And this is something that John taught a couple of weeks ago. He said this, it really clicked in my brain. And I was like, wow, I need to teach this. Indifference is the antidote of fear and anxiety. So whenever you have these visuals, whenever you have these thoughts, whenever you have these scenarios that want to come up to the surface that aren't being useful, like you're not in a dangerous environment, you're not preparing for the worst, you're not in the midst of war, like you're just sitting at home, right? You're like, you're just sitting at home thinking. So you, whenever something pops up, just say, so what? Like literally just so what? That's great. (laughs) Like, okay, thank you. Like, whatever. Or you can go through that visual of just throwing it in the trash. So those are a couple tools that I practice. And just the act of saying, so what, so what, so what just diminishes the meaning. It just creates indifference of like, okay, that's great. Like, thanks for the information, but so what? And you'll see that they'll decrease and decrease and decrease and decrease until there is no emotional charge whatsoever.